I used to gamble and wear a bra that could fit me here, only here. And huko, you can see kuna manyama zine zina hang hang. So if I march and they do my hands like this, kuna that friction that comes along with it. After the surgery, when I woke up, was like, I just did like, and I saw something that I never thought it was me. Because to me, I call them melons. <laughs> Mine, I call them melons. <laughs> okay, because when I saw them, it, it was just like these sweet melons. You know, they were just like right here where they should have been all that time. My name is Jamila Masud. Uh, I am a freelance producer and uh, I'm based in Machakos, but is from the word freelance, I'm movable and free. I can go anywhere as long as I can breathe. I'm also a script writer. I write television series and television movies. I also do some documentaries. So that is what I do way back in high school and um, I went to a boarding school it was my first time seeing people showering in in halls you know and all that stuff and seeing other girls and different size of breasts but fortunately or unfortunately I noticed I was different how my breasts were bigger and had more fat than the others and yet I was only 15 at that time and looking back on how the form fours were you know it was even bigger than theirs so I was basing my size with their class you know like I'm form one then they are form four but at least they are normal to me it wasn't normal by that time they were big extremely big and uh, so it caught my attention uh, when we did go home for half term, I went there and talked to my mom and told her that uh, something was wrong because to me it was like after every three months I used to change my cup size. Primary school I was very normal and uh, my best were normal size. I don't know what happened. It's like any, I just slept and then when I woke up, something was different, you know. And being that naive and extremely shy girl, I, I didn't use to watch myself before the mirror, you know. That is one thing I'd recommend for everyone who's watching. You should at least watch yourself every day before the mirror. You cannot something and it can, it can help you in the near future. Okay, it made me very uncomfortable because I, I used to get a lot of criticism from my fellow girls because, okay, the boys were so hyped about it. You know, they were like, hey, I'm a Eva and all that stuff. But the ladies, they were like, okay, some were jealous, if I might say, because uh, some hated me for no reason. And later I came to realize it's because they didn't have and they had, you know, but to me, it made me very uncomfortable. It made me choose friends because uh, on Saturdays we used to go for sun basking. I used to hang around these girls. So when I go there, they'll be like, hey, mine, mine are like, I don't know what, not, not. Oh, the other one, I say me. So when it comes to me, I couldn't say about me. Uh, I wasn't comfortable. And most of the time they'd think that maybe I had I had a baby, you know, or maybe I had some miscarriage, you know, way back. That's why I'm like that, but it wasn't any true. If I track back my life, uh, in high school, the only effect that it had, uh, it, it demoralized me. Um, it made me be somebody who I didn't wanted to be. First of all, I had to choose friends. I'm not that type of a person who actually choose people, you know. Me, I mingle, I mingle, I mingle. So it had, it had me to choose the type of friends I'd want to hang around with. If you had these small boobs and all that stuff, 
you are not my type oh so if you had like almost similar to me you are my cup of tea i'll be friends with you and all that stuff we'll talk with we'll love and people would wonder why am i so free with you and not with them but that was the reason as to why so back in high school we had to choose like uh, the sports the kind of sports you know or groups that we had to be in and uh, fortunately or unfortunately i ended up at the drama club uh, i wanted to be in sports a lot but i couldn't so if i could run you know me my boobs are like this you know so i couldn't i was so shy it was a mixed school so you can imagine the type of embarrassment i could have gone through so i chose the less activity a kind of group and that was a drama group not knowing i had a talent in it and not knowing that is where and when my journey to what i do today could have begun if you were in a bra and you feel like you've been cut under your arms you know you feel like you've been squeezed here or you have any type of marks on your shoulders then something is wrong with you a bra should be comfortable a bra should be easy and skin friendly so if there's any form of irrational effects yes. from wearing a bra then you have a problem with gigantomastia luckily all all what i had was the marks on my shoulders and okay, i used to be in the scuba club group and uh, so marching when i was marching you know number one i couldn't fit my bra size so i used to gamble and wear a bra that could fit me here only here and huko you can see kuna manyama zenye zina hang hang so if i march and they do my hands like this kuna that friction that comes along with it and it was really 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 painful such that i can't go the next day and march so i used to sleep like whoosh, so that i can get at least a bit of fresh air and then reduce that friction so that i can be fit again for tomorrow's marching okay i went back and talked to my mom but at that time we uh family was going through some hardship my dad had just lost his job back then my mom was critically ill at the hospital but he went to talk to her and uh, to her she thought it was maybe witchcraft you know because we don't have such situations at our family and uh she 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 was concerned and after right after that life was normal to me if i may say because uh i chose to we'd rather have that food on the table than me than me going maybe uh, or looking for the treatment na yet it was not that harmful to me so when i gave birth to my first baby i gained a lot of weight and now be that became a problem uh weight was generally all over my body and uh, my bust were not left out so the cup size was big huge i can't remember it was what but it was huge and uh, i thought maybe because of breastfeeding that is the reason as to why my bust have increased on in their sizes and little did i know i was working on the other side of gigantomastia now i became lazy numerous back aches difficulty in breathing constant neck pains you see chest pains and uh, i used to have a lot of fatigue on my shoulders uh, lower back i couldn't sleep at night well i used to wake up most of the time and then i'd, I'd go to my sitting room and then i'd sleep on the floor with my with my back because i felt the bed was very uncomfortable i didn't know it was uh, the effects of gigantomastia 
I gave birth to a very big baby and now carrying that little girl here was a problem. My bust were all over here. So I used to put my breast down, a pillow up, the breast that I'm using up on the pillow and on the baby. So I couldn't even afford to fall asleep. If I, I dare fall asleep, I'd hear <laughs> and then yeah my kid would do like that and then chokes the breast has choked and then the milk has choked the baby it was a disaster so i had to be breastfeeding while i'm seated most of the time and you know how kids are at night so my majority of the nights were, were almost all done while on a seated position and that too increased the back pains Emotionally, uh, it really pulled me back. And, um, but due to whatever I had experienced way back in high school, I became thick skin about it. And I knew where to be, when to be, how to be. So I really avoided a lot of uh, gatherings and public places. I was mostly indoors and it made me so introvert about it. But on um, the brighter side of it, it made me uh, release my emotions through writing. That's why I mentioned that I'm a writer. Going back to the culture, a bit of it, how it, it affected me. Uh, you know, charity begins at home, as they say. But you find that home was one of the major tormenting places. Um, if my relatives are watching this, there's one of my aunts. She really embarrassed me. Uh, I had Yanni gathered courage, you know, and then I said, like, because this is the last bit of me with Gigantomastia, let me travel back home for a wedding. The last bit of me was, that was the last moments for me with Gigantomastia before my surgery. So I just wanted Yanni to go back home. They see me the way I, I was, and then come now again with the new me so when i went there there was uh, there was a wedding and my aunt came and called me like come let come help me serve those guests over there me went there uh, so i was serving them and then uh a point point i had to stand up you know shake myself a, a little bit you know i repositioned those big boobs you know and then she laughed Kwanzaa and then she pulled me to the front of the room we were. The house is so big so it had capacity of almost 50 in the room that we were. So Akani pulled me up on belly and then she was like where did all this come from? You see this is not our family you know where did it come from? To me it was a great embarrassment and uh, but since I had that mentality like ah this is my last days with this big bust you know and I just smiled and then I took a deep breath and then I told her uh, this came from China and uh, luckily I'm taking them back to America and then I ran out of the room I didn't go for the wedding reception. Nobody saw me at the wedding, so people I know people uh, used to ask Alinda Gawapi, you know, especially my relative, my cousin who was the uh, groom. I'm sure Alishanga Nilienda Wapi because they never appeared anywhere in that wedding. So when they came back, me nilikuwa tu kwa kitanda ni melala, I didn't go for the reception, I didn't do anything about it. So what I, I'd say is that uh, with people suffering from anything, uh, apart from even gigantomastia, the best support system is family. Family is everything. And when you get the list of what you should be getting from them, especially through the support, not financially, emotionally, you know, and them being there physically for you. It's quite a challenge. When I had my second baby, let me start from there. There's this day I was doing dishes at the sink and I couldn't breathe. 
I was out of breath. I felt like yani, that was my last breath. I couldn't even inhale. And then I just collapsed. From there I woke up to a hospital bed and I was wondering what was wrong with me. My mom was there and uh, my late dad was there too. And um, them talking to me was like, the doctors have done all the tests and you're okay. But one doctor has referred us, we take you to a breast surgeon for further checkup so that they can rule something called gigantomastia. And uh, is it treatable? That was my first question. Will I be able to have my boobs again? To me, at that point as a layman, was like maybe they will cut them off and then I stay without breasts for the rest of my life. And as a woman, this is one of the assets we brag ourselves about it being a woman. And uh, they said, let's go and talk to the doctor first. We are new to Gigantomastia, so we don't know about it. Mm -hmm. We were given the number. I was discharged from the hospital and we came here for checkup. And uh, the doctor said and confirmed that I had Gigantomastia. And uh, the option was surgery immediate surgery due to whatever I was going through the diff difficult breath the pains and all that stuff it was really bad yeah. actually I had developed something I had developed pain on my left knee and somewhere here around here I had pain I couldn't even walk properly I was wondering what could be wrong. It was because of the size of my left breast was extremely huge. Mine actually was, were not proportional. I can remember very well when he saw me and then after, as he was doing the consultation and all that stuff, he told me this is a rare case. Upon uh, surgery, uh, 8.1 kgs were removed, around 8.1 to 8.3. Kgs. And my left breast had carried like almost 5 kgs of it. Okay, what, what I noted was upon wearing my bra and maybe going out f to the market and then coming back home, I had these terrible back aches. So I'd take painkillers most of the time. All the time I used to take painkillers to relieve pain. I didn't know I was dragging myself. And uh, to avoid all that, I avoided going out like completely until like any, it was an emergency. That was when I'd go out. I'd avoid gatherings. I'd avoid places where I'm not comfortable. Actually, when visitors come to my home, I was very uncomfortable because I, at home I, I never wore any bras, you know. I was just like that freelancing, you know, at home. And when visitors come, I have to cover up myself, you know, be like a, like a normal person. But it was really quite a hectic thing. Once you get to the doctor, uh, there's this checkup, they look at your uh, BMIs and then they, they measure your bust size, your shoulder size, you know, the right normal breast, the nipple should face upwards. My nipples were facing downwards, actually, if, if, if it was length size, they were lengthy, if I may say. They were lengthy and fatty, so you can imagine what I was going through. If it's no, it's a no bra time, they were hanging up, almost down here, and one was longer than the other one. So you see, I had a lot of trouble. So when I just exposed myself to the doctor, he knew I had trouble. They really took time to measure and uh, get me to the right size I am today. From the size, from to the length, to the diversion of the nipples, 
uh, I was the second case he was to do because the first one he had already done it in Kilifi I think if I'm not mistaken and uh, seeing me it reminded him of what he had done in Kilifi so he automatically ruled that I, I was closer to that case because that girl I don't know if the size but the margin were not as much as big from mine Surgery was the recommended option at that time because I was having difficult in breathing and yet my heart was okay, my lungs were okay, I was very normal. The problem was my bust weight was suffocating me in a way that because that weight was coming down here and it, I, it, it used to compress my stomach a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So it made my breathing so difficult because of that weight. To me it was a miracle up to date. I had trained myself like uh, not breathe through my nostril. Most of the time I used to breathe through my mouth and uh, the first thing I noted after the surgery when I woke up was like I just did like and I saw something that I never thought it was me because to me I call them melons. <laughs> Mine I call them melons <laughs> okay, because when I saw them, it, it was just like these sweet melons. You know, they were just like right here where they should have been all that time, and uh, I was so relieved. I was like I was born again because I was free from. Pain. I could literally feel my lungs as I took a breath. I felt my lungs. Like it's been many years. Like I even had forgotten if I had lungs. And there were no any form of pain. And uh, I remember smiling and I could see those faces, the surgeon's faces and I was a happy woman at that time. The healing process is very quick. Uh, as the surgeon told me, the healing is on mind. So if you believe you healed, you're healed actually. And um, it wasn't as tough as I thought or not as tough as people think it is. Within like three weeks you're good to go but me actually <laughs> I was discharged from the hospital like today tomorrow I was at the station working okay. the healing process was uh, was okay and uh, the do's and the don'ts oh, as long as you you don't touch your breasts you know uh, breasts is a very delicate part especially if it's it has a wound and you know those cuts are wounds so if you don't touch touch them you know if you don't open I use the sponge bath until the wounds are dry because if you do uh, the normal bath before that and the wounds get wet, wet infection is very high the risk of infection is very high okay. so at least I did sponge bathing for those like three weeks and then when the wounds when the my breasts were exposed by the surgeon and then he recommended I could take now a mini a normal shower but of course with some tapes that he had given me to cover the wounds before and then when I shower after showering I remove them and then put those tapes okay. again the first thing that I went for was swimming with my girls. I have two girls. So most of the time when I took them for swimming, I'd just be a spectator right at the corner and I'd stay there until they are done. Even if it was an emergency case, I couldn't wake up there to go to the pool and pull them out or something like that. So I used to just shield myself 
kwa kakona and then them do their stuff swim there they want something they come there the only time i'd wake stand from where i was maybe going to the washroom and we'd be taking them to take a shower after their swimming but after my surgery my life changed i was able to wear the bikinis that i wanted to wear at that time and i was able to sun bask go to the swimming pool do whatever i wanted to do uh, i had even forgotten how to swim but uh, gradually i did learn and uh, regain my life back if i may say uh, i'm always outdoors you know i'm always traveling uh, doing anything that i wanted i w i was really 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 uh, interested with going to the gym you know at that time i couldn't go to the gym because i could not even do a skip with those breasts but like right now i'm not that fit but i can do like 40 50 before i get tired and i don't have to hold my bust you know i just skip 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 so that that is one of the major changes that i noted secondly um i became lighter i had to re know how to walk oh uh, you know when i was big with those busts i couldn't walk faster faster but right right, <laughs> right now you can just walk 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 i never used to walk long distance i always used to take an uber or a motorbike or be in the car all the time and but right now i can just feel like i can walk you know the first thing actually i did after that i moved uh, I like the suburb areas, so I moved to a place where it was far away, a bit far from the town, and uh, it's got some hills, and I love hiking there and walking every day in the morning, evening. I just panda them, lima them, shuka. I'm so comfortable about it, and no any form of pain actually, no any form of pain. If I was to live in an apartment, I'd choose the nearest to the basement i never wanted to took the stairs or that stuff because it it could have been so hectic in the kitchen it was quite challenging uh, i couldn't do multiple things at the time and if maybe my uh, house nanny doesn't show up i do one thing if it's washing it's washing if it's doing the utensils, it's doing the utensils. If it's doing the the house cleaning, you know, it's doing that. But like right now, I am multi-purpose. I can do everything and still go to the gym and then come back do my mountain, you know, walks and then go back to the swimming and do that whole package without getting tired or having any form of eggs. my wardrobe of course changed a lot a lot like 99.9 .9. it really changed because nothing was everything was baggy to me but you know i i knew i was going for the surgery so i i and i knew the size that i wanted and so i used to buy some attires around that size and that that cup size pair so after the surgery i just threw everything off uh, donated some and then now starting the life tenor was good because i just i can wear anything that i want anywhere <laughs> the capsules that i was i can't remember but i don't know i had even surpassed the gg you know yes. kuna the cup a b c g is the biggest i had surpassed the g cup size mm. yeah from the measurements that i i had been given at one time i had surpassed it and uh, for now i wear cup 38 to that to 40 that is but 40 is my maximum bit of it. I never used to find my cups. That was a GG. I've never seen a GG bra in my life. So what I normally used to do, I never shopped kwa exhibitions. I used to go to Mutumba Uka, Bells, Zikifunguliwa. 
I'd wait for people up here because my size is Iko Apo and then I'd sit wait such hey until further notice uh, so so the mutumba venda would tell me acha basi nikiangalia nikipata i'll call you so anaka and then call gives me a call i go back check it is not my size but it's almost fit close to my size what do i do i just pick it wear it portion you know br big breasts you can mold them so I portion them here and this bit of it I wear like a book top like you know and then I just if I put the book top on it squeeze so now I, I, I become a bit uncomfortable with it yeah so during that time I couldn't wear anything strapless you know because of the double you know load you can see there Okay, let me start first with the insurance and, H and HAF. To them, it's a cosmetic surgery and they don't fund cosmetic surgeries. Actually, it isn't a cosmetic surgery. What I'd recommend is that there are a lot of people suffering from gigantomastia. Finances are issues. With, it, with the hardship that we have today, will you just get like maybe 300,000? just to do your best or you'll get that 300,000 to pay fees treat somebody with other terminal illnesses or something you know so it's quite challenging for me I was lucky enough my brother was there to support me financially and he did a great job thanks a lot big bro I also found about uh, Ruth McKenna and her Gigantomastia Foundation it came in handy and uh, it helped trim my bills and it was comfortable for me and it was something that we could pay and offset it almost immediately and that is how my surgery was done Okay, what I'd say to society about gigantomastia, number one, don't judge. Because through judgment, that is where we get demoralized because of gigantomastia. We never chose to have big breasts, if I may call them the way they call them, ama matuzo. We never chose that. We never wanted that. Everybody wants to be perfect in their own reflection. So having that it is not our choice so stop judging us stop judging any person with gigantomastia and stop overthinking that abortion early sex prostitution is the major cause of gigantomastia gigantomastia is a disease just like any other form of disease and sensitization machinani is a must because of gigantomastia because it really demoralizes people about, uh, about themselves and society should be one place people should feel safe and you getting demoralized from the place where you wake up, breathe, eat, live, work, school, it is really quite a really very painful 
process. For those who have gigantomastia, the, the funny bit of gigantomastia is that the, it, it has two sides, the positive and the negative side of it. If to you, you feel like you're positive with it, you don't have this back pains and all that stuff, then you're okay. You're good to go. Live with it. We can't judge. That is you and that is who you chose to be. But if you have this other extreme that it, you have difficulty in breathing. Actually, before, after my surgery, let me start like before my surgery. There's this, there's this lady. She was like, you do it. And then when you come through it, I'll go do it. Do you know she died while I was recovering in the hospital? from just loss of breath yeah she died gigantomastia is out here the effect is inside there just if you're having it and you're having fears about it just recall this person who has cancer and has undergone double mastectomy and she's living a cancer-free life because of such a process the difference here is that we are left with our breasts and then they don't have them you see now doing or going through that surgical bit of gigantomastia it reduces you the risk of having the breast cancer because when the surgeons are inside they are doing those surgeries they even double and cross check for any form or anything that can be cancerous in the future my appeal to get to the government is that uh, we can do anything for our own people, you know, we can do anything. For instance, the COVID case, we never knew about COVID, we didn't know about COVID, we never thought about COVID. But when COVID pandemic came, the government came in handy to do everything they could have done to save us from that COVID. So when it comes to the gantomastia, I can appeal to the government. The least they could do uh, or they can do is set aside found, uh, like a foundation like with that big financial and emotional physical support system whereby they can maybe even have a, like a center supporting gigantomastia like the cancer centers and support us through that. A lot of us are very successful and very highly ambitious we have very big dreams we can contribute a lot to the society and to ourselves we can even increase the wealth of our country but due to what we are suffering from it shun us from being who we are supposed to be you know we cannot be ourselves because of that shame of gigantomastia maybe somebody want to be like bolt of the bolt you know so um, that person want to be a she bolt of kenya but she cannot be because of the huge you know weight of the breasts and she cannot afford the treatment cost you know so the government can be a great of help if they can come up with such a plan and help reduce gigantomastia in kenya it will be a great great and a humble request to mr president i hope if he's watching these are my assets i look at them every day say a silent prayer to the team that made this possible and to everybody who is suffering from gigantomastia it is possible it is here I'm a living testimony of it. I lived it's with it. There, but something can be done about it. Yes, and yes. I'm a living testimony of it. I've lived with gigantomastia for over 20 years. And here I am, gigantomastia free.